The home team is hot, the crowd is hot, and the temperature inside the dome is rising. Trying to maintain a comfortable temperature inside the huge space of a dome stadium is an enormous task, one which involves controlling the rate in which heat circulates. Controlling rate in a thermal system is similar to a fluid and an electrical system. What counts is how much moves in a period of time. The how much in a thermal system is heat energy. So rate in a thermal system, or heat flow rate, is the amount of heat energy moved in a period of time. That's H over T, which could be calories per second. Measuring the flow of heat is vital to the operation of many pieces of equipment. Of course, furnaces and boilers have to generate heat, but equally important is the removal of heat from a system. For example, a car engine generates heat as it burns the gases in the cylinders, otherwise it doesn't run. But if that heat is not taken away by the cooling system, it builds up, the engine overheats. So the cooling system in a car uses a thermostat to control the heat flow through the engine so that the amount of heat flowing into the engine is balanced by the amount of heat flowing out. The same is true for a dome stadium. Heat is generated by an unusual source. Mary Prohaska is a technician who must adjust the air conditioning system so it'll take the heat away at the proper rate. This is the central control panel for the Tacoma Dome. We have a total energy management system inside the dome. We, in effect, generate our own weather. Its major contributing factors are the people, the amount of people that we have in here, and what they're doing, and the event that's going on. If we have a great deal of people moving around, say during a concert, or some other kind of active event, they're gonna generate much more heat, and that will affect the way we control our system inside the dome. The air coming back from inside of the dome is read on this gauge. This tells us what we're drawing from the main arena inside of the dome. We mix that with the outside air, and this shows us what we're putting into the dome. Now, if there's a lot of people in it, this gauge will want to read lower than say it's comfortable because the people here are going to heat it up to an uncomfortable level. Now, if we can't keep this low enough and if it's cool enough outside, we'll bring in more outside air. Say if we have ice, it's naturally going to be cooler. We'll want it at a cooler temperature. People expect that. If we have a concert, we know that it's going to be much hotter. You've got lights. You've got people crowded together, packed up against the front of the stage, generating a great amount of body heat. We take all this into account when we're adjusting our controls and making these people comfortable. There are four things that affect the way heat energy will move in a thermal system. Temperature difference, surface area, thickness, and thermal conductivity. Let's look at the first case. Remember that heat moves from warm areas to cold because of temperature difference. The larger the temperature difference, the faster the heat will move. This is why Mary Prohaska is concerned with the difference in temperature between the people in the stands and the temperature of the air, because that determines how quickly the dome gains or loses its heat. The second factor that affects the flow rate of heat is surface area. In cooling systems, Radiators are usually used to take away the heat, but a radiator is simply a large surface area exposed to the air. The reason there are so many tubes and fins in a rad is to expose as much of the surface to the air as possible, so more air can come in contact with the material to be cooled. This is also why air-cooled engines have fins, to increase the surface area of the hot metal so the air can remove the heat as quickly as the engine generates it. The next factor in heat flow is the thickness of the material. Since heat energy can flow through solid objects, the thickness determines how far the heat has to travel. So the heat will move more quickly through a thin material rather than the thicker part of the same material. In glass manufacturing, the cooling rate is often critical to the final product. 
If molten glass cools too quickly, it cracks or shatters. The last factor is thermal conductivity, or how well a material lets heat move through it. Metals are usually good conductors of heat, while insulators are not. This house is well insulated. The insulation is a poor conductor because it stops the flow of heat out through the walls in winter and inward during the summer. These four factors, temperature difference, surface area, thickness, and thermal conductivity all determine the rate at which heat energy will move in a thermal system. A modern example of all these factors in action at the same time is the space shuttle. When the shuttle is returning from space at 25 times the speed of sound, the friction from the air generates thousands of degrees of heat on the outside of the ship. That's a very large temperature difference between the outside and the inside. At the same time, the surface area, the entire outside skin of the shuttle, is very large. The metal of the skin is very thin and a good conductor. All these factors lead to a situation where a lot of heat outside the spacecraft will move very quickly inside and fry the astronauts. So the outside surface of the shuttle is covered with extremely poor conductors of heat. They're thick enough so any heat which does begin to move through it will take a very long time to make it inside. Virtually all energy we use ends up as heat. And whether we're trying to generate it or trying to get rid of it, knowing the rate at which heat flows will help us control it. <laughs>